So in this video, we're going to use the method of markers to find a fair distribution of goods. Uh, we see in this problem, we have four players, Alice, Bianca, Carla, and Dana. They're going to divide 20 pieces of candy using the method of markers. And we see that the candy is laid out in an array. That is uh, the first condition. You have to line up all the items as you see here. And then each player places markers there. Markers could be a chip, it could be anything, but it just puts a placeholder. So if we were to look at this, we see that um, if we were to look at player A's first chip, so that's their first chip, it includes all of the items from one to five. So those five pieces of candy are the first fair share according to player A. The next fair share, we have to find A2, we would say the next fair share for player A are all the items from six to 11. Third fair share of all the items from 12 to 16. And the fourth fair share are all the items from 17 to 20. Again, these are just from the point of view of player A. I looked at only the markers for player A. And what we can do now is we can put this into a table. So we could say that the fair share for round one, so that's what R1 stands for, are items one through five. For round two, player A will accept items six through 11. For round three, player A will accept 12 through 16. And for round four, Player A will accept items 17 through 20. So the reason for these are there are different flavors in each of them. Maybe there's something the player is allergic to, something they don't like, something they like a lot. So that's why we have these different groupings. We want to do this for each of the players. So let's now look at what are all of the fair shares for Bianca, player B. So I'm going to look at everything up to the first chip for player B, that's items one through four. And then the next marker that player B puts down includes items from five to eight. And the third marker are items from nine to 15. And the fourth round fair share would be items 16 through 20. All right, so now we want to look at the next player, Carla. And Carla's markers for round one include all of the items from one through six. For the next round, Carla will accept items seven through nine. The next fair share to Carla are items 10 through 14. And then the final fair share are items 15 through 20. And now we have to do this again for our fourth player, Dana. Dana has a first fair share. Let me erase this. So Dana has a first fair share from one through five. Player D's second fair share is six through ten. Third fair share includes items 11 through 16. And the fourth fair share are items 17 through 20. So this is the setup part. Now that we've done the setup part, we can actually see who wins which of the uh, items for each of the rounds. So round one, we want to find the first player uh, whose marker shows up. 
first marker is B1. We take the first marker because that's the least number of items that someone is accepting as a fair share in the first round. So items one through four are going to go to player B. So Bianca gets items one through four. Now that player B has gotten a fair share, player B is out of the game, so we can remove all of player B's markers. Since round one is done, we can cross out all of the round one bids, which means now we go on to round two. So we're looking for the first marker with a subscript of two, and that would be the second fair share. Here we see C2 wins the second fair share. That's Carla. We look at Carla's round two fair share. Carla gets seven through nine. Some people make the mistake of giving Carla everything from five through nine. That's not how this works. Remember the table said round two, Carla accepts seven through nine as a fair share. So what happens to five and six? Well, they go to nobody. So we call that our surplus. So now that Carla got a fair share, we take all of Carla's markers away and we cross out the other round two chips. And we go on and we say, which is the first round three chip to show up? So if we look at this, it can go to either player A or to player D. So to answer this correctly, we have to say, well, who's going to accept the smallest? And if we look at the drawing here, the distance between the D chips is larger than the distance between the A chips. Whoever is willing to take less gets the fair share. Player A gets this round. So, player A in the third round gets items 12 through 16. We went from 9 to 12. That means 10 and 11 are unclaimed, and 10 and 11 go into the surplus. Now that player A got Round three, we can give uh, player D round four. That's 17 through 20. We see that there's no missing numbers in between 16 and 17, so there's no more surplus to be added. And this would be our final distribution. We have Alice gets items 12 through 16. Bianca gets items one through four. Carla gets items seven through nine. And Dana gets items 17 through 20. And there's a surplus of items 5, 6, 10, and 11. That's how this game ends. If we wanted to share the surplus, we would have to find another way to distribute it. It could be by uh, another one of the fair division games we've learned. Divider chooser, loan chooser, loan divider or it could just be left in the surplus for another day.